Hi, Mason from Canon, and I'm in self-isolation, probably somewhat similar to what you're experiencing. I'm sitting here in my backyard and I decided to try something different, and perhaps something unique for you. I'm going to explore my area here with macro photography, so stay tuned as I share with you five things to help you get started with macro photography. Macro photography is a great opportunity to see the world in a different way. Most likely you don't walk around with a magnifying glass or have superhuman vision. By using a macro lens, you get really up close and personal with your subject. And sometimes you may discover something new that you've never seen before. So what is macro photography? Well, when learning about it, you may hear the ratio of one to one magnification. That means we are able to capture life-size representations of our subjects because what is photographed is true to size when comparing it to the imaging sensor. So if I photograph a quarter, that image of the quarter is capable of accurately being represented true to size as if it is on the sensor. So what about macro lenses? Well, the simple explanation is that a macro lens has a closer minimum focusing distance, which means it can focus closer than conventional lenses. And this brings me to number one, picking a macro lens. We have 14 different lenses that are designed with macro capability across our EF and EFS and RF lineup. But if I was to pick one lens to get started, I'm picking the EF 100mm 2.8L Macro IS USM. What's great about this lens is that it has a minimum focusing distance of 0.99 feet or 0.3 meters, and it's telephoto. I don't have to get absolutely close up to my subject as I would with a wide angle macro lens. This allows me to have a little more space just in case I'm photographing something and need to keep some distance, such as an insect or bug that might get spooked and fly away. Of course, it has fast autofocus and image stabilization, which is great when shooting handheld. Also right here is the focusing distance range selection switch that allows you to switch the focusing distance range to one of three settings, full, which is 0.3 meters to one foot, to infinity for the full range of autofocus, half a meter or 1.6 feet to infinity, or it can limit the range by selecting the last option with 0.3 meters, one foot, to half a meter, 1.6 feet. If I know I'm only gonna be photographing subjects really close, I'll keep it to this last setting because by setting the suitable focusing distance range, the actual autofocusing time can be shorter by not having the motor run through the full range of autofocus. And bonus info, it's also a fantastic portrait lens. Take a look. Also works great when your subject, like my kid, likes to get up and close to the lens because he likes making funny faces. Number two, find your subject. I'm lucky that I've got a nice little backyard and a walkway with lots of plants. It's great for me because I'm able to scout around and look for different things to photograph. And keep in mind that you've gotta get up close and personal. Be careful your subject doesn't move too fast or that the wind doesn't shift around. There is a whole different world of small things to discover, such as ants crawling around, bugs flying, and even things you may have never seen, perhaps because you just never stop with the intention of looking really close. And if you don't have a yard, look for the details in some of your household items, such as food, like a vegetable, or perhaps even some toys and electronics. Look around and find a subject just waiting to be explored. They're everywhere and waiting for you to transform those details into larger than life images. Number three, and that's light. When starting out, the sun can be your obvious first choice to utilize. It's there and you can always depend on it rising and setting. But sometimes things may look different when making photographs. Look at your subject matter in the morning, in the middle of the day, later in the afternoon, perhaps even in the evening. Things are gonna change. The color of light changes, shadows change. Even your subject may change. A blooming flower that is wide open in the morning may contract later in the day. So come back to your subjects at different times of the day. It might surprise you what you'll see. What else can you use? How about artificial light? I really enjoy using our speed lights, such as the 600 EX2 RT. I'm able to manipulate the light and control it in any direction. I can change the output intensity. I can move the light closer or farther. I can create light and cast shadows that go left to right, up and down, or even from behind to create cool backlit effects. And with the built-in radio transmission, I'm not limited to wires that can even set up and control more than one speed light. Number four, composition. Composition is so crucial when making photographs, and this relates to all genres of photography. What are you going to include and what are you going to exclude? But back to macro photography and composition. 
you need to consider depth of field because so much of what you're going to photograph is up close and may have an incredible shallow depth of field. When thinking about your image, the subject is important, but so is your background. Be thoughtful with what you include in the background so that it doesn't distract from the subject. Take your time after you take your photo. Perhaps shift around a bit. Keep in mind, you don't have to move very much because it's macro photography. Just move over or slightly shift around a tiny bit and eliminate the distraction. But if you want everything in focus, that leads me to number five, bracketing and stacking images. Due to the shallow depth of field, perhaps you want all of your flower in focus and not just the tip of the stigma, but all of the pistol. This is the reason why I selected to use the EOS RP. The EOS RP has an option to enable focus bracketing. This means that I can take a number of different shots at different points of focus. This can be from 1 to 999 photos. I recommend to at least start off with 50 shots. Place the autofocus points to the closest part of the subject because as the bracketing sequence continues to take shots, the focus ramps from near to far. From there, you can adjust accordingly if you need more or less. Be sure to use a tripod for this as you want to minimize any movement. And one more tip. Use a remote release or even the 10 second timer to make sure that your camera isn't shaking ever so slightly once you start the bracketing sequence. And one more additional tip, be sure to have some extra room for lens breathing. As focus changes, so will the outer areas of your framing. Keep that in mind as you set up your composition. Once completed, I'll process all of the photos in DPP with the depth compositing tool. It'll find all of the parts that are in focus within the different images and process it so I'm only left with sharp in focus parts, giving me a final image that has everything in focus. It's a great feature that you're going to enjoy using with your macro photography. Be sure to update to the latest version of DPP, and best of all, it's free! Okay, we can't end a list of recommendations without the added bonus, and that is time. Take your time. Take your time to explore and take your time to enjoy the process. This is about seeing details and sparking your imagination. I hope you're able to discover something new about the world you live in, even if it is under self-isolation right now. Please feel free to leave a comment or question, and we'll do our best to get back to you. Also, tag us on Instagram and use hashtag LearnWithCanon, as we'd really like to see what you've created. You can also follow me at MasonZenji on Instagram. I hope our paths cross again in the future. Mahalo.